Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom. In this video, I want to take a look at this very simple question here, which says, if all edge lengths are one, which figure has the greatest volume? And we've got a cube, and then we've basically got the same cube, but shifted a little um, in terms of its angle. But in both of these images, the edge length is always one. Now this, this question was brought up by my math curriculum teacher this week in our seminar. And um, as is often the case with these questions in class, I often get them wrong. And my instinct for this question was that the volume should be the same. Like it shouldn't change just if you tilt the same shape on an angle. But turns out that that's not correct and, and actually the volume of the second shape has changed just through the simple act of um, shifting it. And it, took me, it actually took me a while to be convinced that, that that's actually true, but, but I ended up working through the math and, and it is the case that if all the edge lengths are one, then the second figure actually has a smaller volume than the first. So what I wanna do is in this video work through um, a kind of proof that, that I eventually was able to come up with that, that convinced me that this was the case. So uh, what I'll do, I'll just start by drawing up the basic cube and I'll try and make this um, kind of realistic in its dimensions. So I'll, I'll kind of use my ruler to make sure that all the edges do in fact have the same length to make sure that um, I guess that the cube that I draw at least looks somewhat realistic. Okay, so this is our basic cube. And so we're told that all edges have a length of one. So I'll just note the key ones um, and Hopefully you know that the volume of a cube um, or, or any kind of prism, you'd, you'd take a face. So I'll just take this front face here and it's the area of that face um, multiplied by the height. So here the volume would be equal to the area of this face here, which would just be one times one. And then that area multiplied by the height so that would then be times one. So here it would just be one unit cubed. So this is like a unit cube. Now, if I take um, this cube and now uh, kind of slant it, so again, I'll use my ruler to make sure all the edges are the same. So we'll have this with a length one. Now, instead of drawing um, this edge uh, straight up, we'll put it on an angle, but I'll um, give it the same length. So angle, and then we'll just keep it at the same angle. That means this should hopefully keep its length. Yep. Yeah. And now we'll go Okay, so here's our um, kind of cube again, same dimensions, but um, it's, it's slanted. So instead of the face being a square, so instead of this being 90 degree angles here all the way through, um, we've got different angles. So again, the volume will just be, we can take the area of a face and then multiply it by the height. The height's still gonna be one. But the question is, what is the area of this face? And, and here the area will be, um, uh, it can be calculated using the diagonals. And, and I think what, what I was finding difficult is conceptually, I'm like, if you just take something and shift it, why should its capacity change? But um, if we work through the math, we'll see that if we wanna keep this length the same, then actually we're, we're effectively reducing 
um, the hide and, and you could imagine if you went to the extreme if you were to completely collapse it down to nothing so you you squash the cube into just a flat line then obviously its capacity has gone to zero so you can kind of see how the volume does change um, if you were to maintain the height and you you slanted it at an angle then sure the volume probably wouldn't change because the length of this line would be getting longer and longer but if you're constrained by saying the length of the lines have to stay the same, then what we'll see as I work through an example is that the capacity or the volume does actually change. And at first I was trying to prove just in general terms that no, the volume should always stay the same. But then I realized all I need to do to disprove that, all I need to do to show that the volume isn't identical is just to find one example. If I can show one example when the volume changes, then I've proven that it doesn't stay the same. So um, um, what we can do is we can just pick an angle. We know that this angle must be less than 90 because it's not going straight up. So I just picked an angle, Let, let's call it, um, maybe I'll use a different color, um, 60 degrees, let's say, is this angle here, which means I know this would be 120 because these need to add up to 180. This would be 60, because these need to add up to 180. And then this would be 120, because these and these need to add up to 180. And now um, what I can do is I know that the area of this face will be the um, two diagonals multiplied together and then divided by two. So that, that's how we'll do it. So um, here we, we're going to have volume is equal to, uh, if I call uh, these diagonals P and Q, we'd get um, P, Q onto multiplied by the height, which is still just one. And so the question is, what is P and what is Q given these dimensions and these angles? So it might help just to, if I, if I break this into two triangles, so we'll have our, our first triangle being this one. And then we've got our kind of red side here. And if I call this, this long diagonal P, so we know that this angle here is 120. We know the length of um, these sides are one and one because all the edges have the same length of one. And now if I want to find P, I can use the cosine rule such that P squared would be equal to um, one squared plus one squared minus two times one times one times the cosine of the opposite angle, 120. So that's going to be equal to um, 1 plus 1 is 2, minus 2 cos 120, which will be, if I plug cos 120 into my calculator, cos 120 minus a half. So 2 minus 2 times negative a half would be 2 um, plus 1, which would be 3. So we've got P is equal to 3, so this will be 3 times something on 2 times 1. So now we've got to find um, the other side. So here the other side will be this other triangle. Oh, have I? So I've done this triangle, so now it's... Um, Oh, I've, I've drawn that wrong. So now if I've done that triangle, I now want to do this triangle. So actually what we want is this triangle here to get the other diagonal. So actually we can ignore this line and we're concerned with Q because that'll help us get this, this um, line here, the other diagonal. So in terms of our details, so our edges are all one. This angle here is 60. 
I can use the cosine rule again. So we'll get um, Q squared equals 1 squared. Oh, and sorry, that's P squared is equal to 3. So that means P is equal to root 3. And we only take the positive square root because we're looking at the length. So we're only concerned with the positive line. So now a similar idea for Q. So Q squared will be 1 squared plus 1 squared minus 2 times 1 times 1 times cos of 60 this time. So that's using the cosine rule again. So that's going to be 2 minus 2 cos 60, which equals 2 minus 2 times, and let's do cos 60 in the calculator. So that's a half. So 2 minus 1 would be 1. So that means Q would be equal to the square root of 1 or 1. So 3 times 1 on 2. Um, ah, sorry, the square root of 3 is P. So P is root 3 times 1 on 2 or root 3 on 2. So what's that? Square root of 3 divided by 2. 0.866 and so on units cubed and that is less than the one unit cubed that we had here. So we see that through simply having a, a smaller angle, through shifting the angle, if we keep the, the length the same, then our volume has decreased. And we'll see if we keep making that angle smaller and smaller till eventually it's nothing, the volume in theory would keep getting towards zero so because you'd end up with just a flat um, flat line so that that's kind of the the proof that I worked through that helped convince me that this was true um, I, I think it's a very interesting question because um, you could you could really spark a lot of discussion in a class if you were to put this question to a whole range of levels of students I mean you could put this to say a, a late primary school, early high school class, and you might not expect them to do the math, but you could at least have the conversation and even actually get physical cubes and see what happens physically as you shift things around. And as you worked up through higher and higher levels or grade levels at least, um, you could then perhaps um, move the discussion along and, and convert it into this kind of algebra to demonstrate through some more rigorous type of proof what's what's going on and and once your class has learned the cosine rule they've probably got everything they need um, or cosine rule and area of a of a um, rhombus here um, that's that's all you'd need to then be able to do the algebra noting that if you want to make the argument that the volume doesn't change all you need to do to counter that is to find one example where it does, which is what I've shown here. So hopefully you found that, that an interesting question. I think I, I found it quite interesting and, and it's, it's really neat to have these kind of elegant questions that can really spark some good discussion. Um, if you found that explanation helpful, please be sure to give it a like. And if you're someone who wants to keep their finger on the pulse with the kinds of questions that other students are struggling with, please be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can stay in the loop. All right, tick boom.